You know what, church, how y'all doing? Come on, stand up. Come on, stand up. Let's get up for worship. This is Resurrection Sunday. Come on. And I'm shot with all my mind. I'm slowly drifting. This bag of mine. And I can't seem to win the fight. And I shot with all my mind. I'm slowly drifting. This bag of mine. And just when I went out of love, I met a man I didn't know. And he told me that I was not alone. Because he picked me up, come on, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior. Because he healed my heart, he saved my name. Forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the master, I thank the savior, I thank God. Come on, y'all, have a shout. Come on, come on, y'all, clap. Anybody glad it's Resurrection Sunday? Come on, let's sing it out. But you believe Come on, my doubts are burning Like ashes in the wind yeah. Come on Mountain high and valley low I should have found you set my soul This way would so has found this way back Get up, 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 get up,
here Quentin so listen I love that song we gonna have to do that get up out of that grave listen I can imagine Christ sitting in that grave because you got to remember right before that moment he said it's finished it's done and all those that had walked with him talked with him seen miracles that he had performed all they saw was death but see, there was a promise that was made beforehand. He said, this isn't it. And I can imagine him sitting in that grave and his daddy saying, get up out that grave. And for some of you this morning, you walked into this building, you got things holding you down and holding you back. And you want to just shout, you want to sing, but maybe you can't hold a tune. I'm right there with you, but it's Easter Sunday and I don't care if I sound like, I'm just going, if I sound like crap, I'm going to shout it to the rooftops. Because see, where death should have held me, God brought me up out of it. You see, I'm not where I should be. I'm where he's called me to be. So see, when I was at this moment in time where I was supposed to be dead, my daddy said, get up out that grave. Is anybody else, has God pulled you out of a grave this morning? Has anybody else seen the righteousness of God? His grace has pulled you out of some things. Maybe you should have been dead, but you breathed in this morning. And because your daddy said, get up out that grave. Get up out that grave. Get up out that grave. So this morning, we're going to sing it again. We're going to sing it like we mean it. We're going to sing it like it's Easter Sunday. Because God, he picked me up. He turned me around. And today I can say he's placed my feet on solid ground. Because there was a day when I was dead and he said, get up out that grave so I don't care how dead you feel this morning God wants to bring life to those dead places so North Church extended family can we sing that again but can we sing it like we mean it this morning come on can we sing it like we mean it this morning come on Tim sing that sing that get up out of that grave let me hear that again let me hear it again then we'll do our intro y'all come on you heard it come on Come on, let's take it to verse one. Wandering into the night, can't find a place to hide. I'm so confused. And I tried with all my mind, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. This vagabond. Just when I went out of love, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me that I was not alone.
chorus too real quick. Appreciate it. There we go. <laughs> it's all right, y'all. There we go. Man did not what I've seen. Got no choice but to be me. My doubts are burning. My gas is in the way. Come on, let's sing mountain high. The mountain high or valley low. I'll sing of how you set my soul. Another one, I'm free. Come on, y'all, help us out. I lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. I lost another one. I am free. I hear y'all. Come on. And we should. I lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. I lost another one. Technical difficulties, we good. Come on. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Come on. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Come on. Come on, Noah. Get, get up, get up, yeah. Get up out of that grave. We need some shouting. Get up. Get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Hey! you weren't expecting that. I'm going to start popping up at your events and just jump on the stage. Welcome to North Church. In case you haven't noticed, it's Easter Sunday and we are celebrating Jesus this morning. 
I had somebody hit me up the other day. They said, are you a non? I had a couple people. They said, are y'all a non-denominational non church? I said, yeah, but not the snake handling kind. We don't handle the snakes, but we worship Jesus freely. Amen. We don't have, we don't have agendas. We say, God, you have your way. So if you get hungry, let us know. We got some burgers and hot dogs from our event yesterday. But today, we, we, we're all about Jesus like we are every Sunday. But listen, he, this is Easter. It's my favorite holiday. Number one, I ain't got to spend money on my kids like I do on Christmas. But number two, today we celebrate a fulfilled promise. You see, on, on Thursday, Christ was portrayed. On Friday, Christ was put to death. On Saturday, Christ rested. And on Sunday, he proved that he was still the king. That's why I love Easter. So this morning, listen, my wife said, you ain't going to wear a button down in the gym and slacks. And I said, no, because... God don't care about my wardrobe. He cares about my worship. And if I'm going to worship him, I'm going to be comfortable because I'm going to sweat a lot today. Because Tim, he's going to bring it this morning. Singing songs that we can never sing again in this church. Because we ain't going to play it like you. But listen, let me tell you something. This morning, God don't care about your wardrobe. He don't care about what your voice sounds like. He don't care if you worship right or wrong. He don't care about it. Let me tell you what God cares about. He cares that you're coming to him authentically. Like, you're, you are coming to him and saying, this is who I am. I'm not perfect. This is who I am. Watch him. He doesn't expect a perfect sacrifice. He expects a real sacrifice. So maybe you come to church every Sunday or you go to your church every Sunday. Maybe this is your first time in church in months or years or, or maybe even decades. He don't care. What he wants this morning is he wants the real you. See, God don't care if I wear my traditional pink shirt or if I wear a shirt that makes me look like a ray of sunshine. He just wants the real Vince this morning. This morning, my hope and my prayer is this, is that you bring the real you this morning. God can work with that. God can't work with phoniness. He can't work with mask. He can't work with people that want to hide who they are. God needs the real you because if you give him a fake you, you're not going to find a real him. You're going you're gonna to pick and choose what you want to take from today. Don't miss this moment with God. Give him the real you. This morning, can we give Jesus the real us? Come on, can we give him the real us this morning? <laughs> Father God, as we go back into worship, my hope and my prayer is this, is that we don't miss this moment, but we grab hold to it. And we allow you to drag us out of our stuff. The song says, get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. God, we're not going to leave here dead people. We've been shouting all week. We're going to shake our city. Whether it be with a kick drum or with a praise, or with me and my bright yellow shirt shouting, we're going to shake our city this morning. We're going to celebrate. Because for the past two, three years, we've given our focus to everything and we've forgotten you. But this morning, Daddy, we say, help us get refocused. Work on and through us only the way that you can in your precious and holy name. And if you're ready to worship this morning, all God's children said, amen.
you're watching us now but when it looks as if we can't win you wrap a shit you're just stepping for everything we need you supply you got this big control so now we know that you When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You, you made a way It's an outstanding Only because you made, yes It's you, you made a way yeah. When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over Sing this out. Cause you move out here. You cause all to fall with your power. You perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And I'm saying.
Anybody grow up on hands? Come on, let's sing it real quick. Yes, we trust in you, Jesus. Come on, somebody lift your hands. God, we're thankful, Lord, that 2,000 years ago, Lord, you did the impossible for us. You made a way for us to give back to the Father. Lord, when we were uh, just covered in sin, Lord, Lord, we thankful that we can put our trust in you. Come on. Yeah. Yes, Jesus, Jesus, how I Trust in how I proved him over and over. Yes, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust him more. Come on, let's sing it because he lives. Hey, because he
Before Pastor Vince comes up, I want us to get into a mode of worship real quick. Father, we're thankful for what you did on the cross 2,000 years ago. We're so grateful for this day that we get to come together in fellowship to celebrate your life, the resurrection that made it all count, that made you our champion. And I've tried so hard to see it. It took me so long to believe it. That you took the brokenness and carry your victory. Perfection could never earn it. You get what we don't deserve it. That you take the broken things. I hear y'all noise, come on. And raise them to glory. Come on, I see that. For you are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated. With the one who has conquered it all. Come on, let's see this. And now I can finally see it. You're teaching me how to receive it. So let all the striving cease. this is my victory. Come on. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won. Come on, let's sing it. 
So this morning, God, we sing to you our praises. The risen King, yeah, yeah. Come on, when I lift my voice. For when I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the Come on, no church. Y'all sound good. That Jesus has given me, and when I open up my mouth, miracles start breaking out. I have the authority that Jesus has. Come on, listen to one more time. Come on. When I live my Let's sing this bridge one more time. Come on, what I lift my voice. Oh! 
your faith in Jesus. Come on. Now this morning, you are set the perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. Yeah, you're perfect in all of your ways. To us, come on one more time. Let's take it to pass, y'all. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect. Father, we thank you for this morning where we come to gather for this Resurrection Sunday. God, we're thankful, Lord, that despite where we may fall, despite how we failed in the past, God, we're thankful that your sacrifice on the cross covers that up. Lord, your blood is the one that washes away every sin. It's the one that washes away every mistake. Every time we've, we've gone away, every time we've, we've, we've said something against you that, that may have hurt you, God, Lord, your blood is the one that covers it. And God, this morning, we're thankful for what you're going to do, not just in this church, but in churches across the world. And God, we're thankful that you're our champion, Lord. So, Lord, tonight, this morning, God, we surrender it to you. Lord, for the rest of the day, we surrender it to you. Lord, for the rest of the week, we surrender it to you. For the rest of the year, we surrender our lives to you, God, to our champion, the one who fights our battles, the one who won the battle that conquered it all. So, Lord, we just lay everything down at your feet right now for this service. Lord, for what you're going to do through Pastor Vince, for the baptisms. Lord, for everything that you're going to do for those who are watching live. God, we're grateful for what you're doing now and what you're about to do. In Jesus' name. He who existing in the form of God did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. For this reason God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hope has a name, and his name is Jesus. Turn me down just a scotch. I'm echoing. You know you're getting old when you start using words like that, scotch. So good morning, good morning. I'm so happy that it's Easter and we're finishing up our series, Hope Has a Name. 
Over the past three weeks or the past two weeks, now we're leading to our third week, we've been talking about how hope has a name, and that name is Jesus. But before I begin in our service, can we give it up for Mr. Tim Howard and his, his guys and Gerald and did an amazing job. I talked to Tim. I said, Tim, now listen, don't come in here, you know, over singing these songs because we got to try to do these later on. He came in. He did our entire Sunday set list in one song. I was like, oh, you're just going to sing all of our songs in one. But I am so happy that he was able to worship with us today. But hope has a name. And the reason why we chose to do this series over the past, over the past three weeks was because if you stop and you look at where our world has been, there's been a loss of hope. You don't have to admit it, but the reality is there has been. This past three, four years have been some of the hardest years of our life. And what we've done is we've taken our focus off of what it should have been on, and we focused on other things. But the reality is this, is that although the circumstances in our lives changed, Christ did not. Hope did not die. Hope did not run. Hope did not fade away. Hope was still alive and well, but we had lost it. I said last week, if you were here, what I said was, is this, is that hope does not die. Hope does not go away. Hope is still there. Our hope dies. Our hope fades away. Our hope leaves. What do you mean by that? You just, you just contradicted yourself. I absolutely did not. Let me give you some examples. When I was younger, I used to have a barber. I had a lot of hair when I was younger. Things change over the years. He was an older gentleman. I remember I sat down in his chair because before that I used to go to the barber college and I was like, hey man, give me, back in the day it was cool, it's not cool anymore. I was like, give me the Dallas Cowboy symbol in my head. Give me the Coca-Cola symbol. And I remember the first time I got a Coca-Cola symbol. My mom, she, she's like, you know, super Christian. She was like, are you a drug dealer? Are you selling drugs now? I was like, no. So I went to this barber. I sat down in his chair. And I said, this is what I want. He's like, son, you're not going to tell me what you want. You're just going to sit down and let me cut your hair. It's old, dude. I was like, okay. So I sat down in his chair, and he was like, grab, come here, Quentin. Let me use you right quick, boss. Come here. So let me show you what he did. So I sat down in his chair. Oh, my goodness. You're much bigger than me. So he took his hand. He was like, I got you, son. And I was like, why are you grabbing my head like that? He was like, he would just take, his, he would just take the guard, like, and he would just talk to me about life. And I was like, I don't even know what this dude is cutting my hair to look like. But I sat now, he was just like, yeah, back in the day when I first started this barbershop, and da da da, he's cut my head, and he'd be like, just hold your head over. And then he would not, you know, take his time around my ear. I don't know if you've ever been to a barber that don't take their time around your ear, but then he started digging down into my ear, and I'm like, can't cry for this old man because he's going to slap me in the back of my head. I ain't trying to be slapped by this old dude. But I remember when I was getting married to my wife, and my wife, I took her to the hood, and that's what the barbershop was. Stay right there. Don't leave you. That's what the barbershop was called, Greenlight Barbershop, and it was on Tunnel Boulevard in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I remember, I was like, Rena, come to the barbershop with me. You can come hang out with me, and you can see me get my hair cut and everything. My wife was probably the only white person in a 50-mile radius of Tunnel Boulevard. So my wife walks in, and, and he come over here, Clint, and I sit down, and I was like, let me get a haircut. And then my wife walks in behind me. He was like, can I help you with something? I was like, oh, that's my fiance. He was like, you're what? He was like, you getting married, son? I was like, yeah. I said, I need a haircut. He said, I'm going to make you look real good. He was like, he cut my hair. He was just talking to me about life. But it was so weird because regardless of if he did this or that or this, man, I'm getting, this feels so good. I got a lot of aggression I got to let out. But... (laughs) But regardless of what he was doing, I trusted every movement and every motion. Go sit down real quick. Man, your, head is, your head is sweaty. But <laughs> I trusted him. So then as I got older, I moved out of where I was, and I moved down to Cartersville, Georgia with my wife, which is much different. They got a lot of cows and a lot of tractors. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to go to the barber college because I did it when I was younger. I sit down in this girl's chair, no lie, I sit down, and it's, it was like a place probably about the size of that sound booth, or that drum booth, and she's like, come sit in my chair. Here's my question that I ask everybody. You can judge me if you want to, if you want to write, and my, and my email is quentin at Rockmart. 
dot com. But I call up the barbershop or I walk in. I'm like, I got to ask you a question. Can you cut black people's hair? That's why I, I mean, they'd be like, sure. And if they say, sure, I'm like, no, you can't. You can't. So I go into the barber closet. I sit into the, in this chair. She starts cutting my hair. <clears throat> all of a sudden, they all start cutting at the same time. And the power begins to flicker in the building. I was like, we good? Are we fine? The power goes out and does not come back on. I was like, this happen often or, you know, just for me? She said, it may come back on. So after 20 minutes of sitting there, I finally just said, forget it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave. And this is what she said. That'll be $12. It took everything I had not to break everything in that building. I got your 12, pow, straight into the mirror. I walked out of that barbershop looking like I had ringworm. So I drive through Cartersville, and I finally find a barber. His name was Lee Watson, and I sat down in his chair, and he cut my hair. He was my barber. I put my hope in those two barbers. There's someone else that I put my hope in. Uh, it's my mechanic. I, I went to this place. I'm not going to mention the name, but I went to this place, and I got my tires changing, and I trust them. And I was like, how much y'all charge to change brakes? Because I know how to change brakes, but if you if you cheap enough, you change my He's like, $35 an axle, you bring me the brakes. I was like, bet. So I took it there for years, changed my brakes out. Hop in my car, take off, I'm good. The last time that I went, let me say it again, the last time that I went, which was the last time that I'll be going back, he said, your brake's good. Man, I hop in my car, slap it in reverse, back out. I hit the brakes, the car does not stop. I'm screaming like a little girl, we all go die! My wife is sitting up there, she's like, what are you talking about? I can't stop the car, I can't. My wife says the most obvious things, hit the break you don't think I'm hitting the break <laughs> no I'm just doing a cupid shuffle that's what I'm doing kick kick that's what I I was like I'm hitting the break she like just hit the break so I, I was like you know what <laughs> I seen this in a movie it's got to work I saw the fast and furious boy I, I grabbed that wheel <clears throat> slamming in break in the park and it stopped I was like thank you Jesus I was this close to getting out of my car and kissing that ground that close he gonna run out is everything okay no not everything it's not okay bro I know you heard me screaming because you sitting up there watching me. He was like, you got to check the brakes before you leave. No, you got to. I'm paying you to check the brakes. But can you imagine how the disciples felt when Christ was about to die? See, he came down. He was supposed to be this conqueror and this savior. And here he is. And it's at this moment on last Friday, the day that we celebrated Good Friday, where, where he's about to die. The Bible puts it this way in Philippians 2, 8, it says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. See, Christ came to do what he was supposed to do. It wasn't a surprise that he was going to die. He said it to his disciples numerous times. Here's another scripture right here. It says this. It says, Who his own self in 1 Peter 2, 24 bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. So Christ came to die. But if you think about a conqueror, you don't think about somebody that dies because death equals defeat. So how can you say that you're this conqueror, that you came to save us, and all the Jewish people are like, he came to set up this kingdom here on earth, and here he is, he's like, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father God, if it's your will, pass this cup for me, but if not, I'm going to bear this cup, and his disciples are seeing this, and he's talking all this death stuff. Judas comes to kiss him on the cheek, and then he turns him over to the, to the soldiers to be killed. All this stuff is happening. They're still supposed to have their hope in him, and here I am preaching hope has a name. The name is Jesus, but last Friday, we saw that hope was dying on a cross. That's got to be hard. A hard pill to swallow. Last Friday, one of my heroes, my great uncle, my uncle Scoopy, he passed away. He was like, when I think of a superhero, he was my superhero. He was 70 something years old, and my wife was like, he was old. I mean, he's got to die sometime. And I'm like, hush your mouth, woman. That's Uncle Scoopy you're talking about. 
See, Uncle Scooby, he was in the military. He was, he was like, when you think of somebody like a house on fire, they're going to climb the side of the house and rescue you. That was my Uncle Scooby. So when he called me and told me that he had passed, I was just like, you sure? Like, what if he had a double that's just acting because the Russian spies are after him? <laughs> See, maybe he's not really, maybe that's just a mannequin. They're like, no, it's, it's really him. And I was just like, are you positive? Like, are you, what if he's just like playing, like poking with a stick? And they're like, no, he really died. And I remember just thinking, I'm going to school. He died? I'm sure that's how the disciples felt. Because they knew that eventually Christ was going to die because he said it from day one. He said, I've come to be the Savior. I've come to, to help you out. I've come to save you from your sins. I've come to, to rescue you and pay a ransom that you cannot pay. But when you hear those things and it actually happens, it's completely different. My wife told me for years that my son was going to be potty trained. And I put Oreos, I mean, not Oreos, Cheerios and Fruit Loops in the toilet. And he refused to pee on them. I'm like, this dude ain't going to never pee in the potty. Peed on my pillow numerous times. Maybe I should have stuck my pillow in the toilet. But, but then there was that one day where my son walked into the bathroom. My daughter Kira is going to kill me for telling this story. And my son walked out with this cup. And my daughter was like, what's that? And he said, pee-pee. And she didn't believe him. She was like, give me that juice. And she said, and he said, I pee pee. <laughs> and I was like, you just drank your brother's pee. That's going to live with you for the rest of your life. <laughs> but it was on that day that I was like, he's got it. He finally understands it. He's peeing in the potty and not on my pillow. It's a good day. I knew that the day was going to come where it's just going to get weird having a grown man or a grown son in diapers, but I knew eventually it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. But the disciples were told, I'm going to die by Christ, but they weren't prepared for it. And the brutal death of Christ was one as you read it and you study it and you truly dive deep into it, you start to see how they tried their best to torture him. In biblical times, there were four different crosses that they used. They used one that was just a stake. They used one that was in the shape of an X. They used one that was in uh, uppercase T. And then they used one that was in a lowercase T. But they were all usually the same size because all sinners were sinners. All people that were going to be crucified usually were, were hung on the same cross. But what they did was they, they said, we're going to make a mockery of him. So we're going to put him on this cross in the middle of two thieves. And we're going to put a crown of thorns on him. And we're going to put a purple robe on him because that represents royalty. And we're going we're gonna to take him down to the very lowest point of what a human can, can ever bear, and that's what we're going to do. And the reason that we're going to do it is because he's walking around saying that he's a savior. We're going to show them. The pharisaical leaders would say, we're going to show them that he is just a blasphemous mockery of what Christ is supposed to be. And here he is, and he's hanging on this crossing, and you would expect for him to be like, you know what, I'm done. I'm done. I can't do this no more. It's like when my wife said, let's get healthy. I was like, bet, let's do it. We went to the gym. I parked. I said, I'm done. I can't do this no more. This is too hard. She was like, why? I said, because you said I can't eat sugar no more. I ain't even hit the treadmill. you already judging me. We give up on the simplest things, and here's Christ on this cross, and he has nails driven through his hand. And sometimes people think that it's driven through this part, but it wasn't driven through that part. It was driven right through here, and they did that, and they hit all the arteries and the tendons and everything that is there. And they made sure that he hung on that cross, and he hung there for over six hours. And at that moment in time, or some moment in time, he looked up, and he said, Father God, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he said, instead of chastising them and holding them to the fire, I pray that you forgive them. And after all this was said and done, a person came to the leader. And he said, can I have his body? And he said, is he dead? Oh, is he, you know, is he dead? And they went and they checked on him. And of course he was dead. 
They took him off the cross and they placed him in a tomb and they rolled a stone over it because they didn't want anyone stealing his body. They wanted to make sure that everybody knew that this man was not truly a savior. They wanted to make sure that everybody, when they looked at him, they saw this this mockery. They did not want them to forget what was on that cross. And I'm sure that eventually they were going to roll that that stone away and say, ta-da, he's still here. But what they failed to understand is that Christ would have to sit there for three days. What happens in the Bible is this is in Matthew chapter 28. The Bible, in verse 1, it says this, says, After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. If you, if you look at another scripture, because you can find the story in many different places, you'll see on Mark 16, it says this in verse 1 through 2, it says, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, the mother of James and Solomon, <laughs> be bought spices so they, might be, so they might go to anoint Jesus. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? So here's Christ in this tomb, and there's something so significant about that Sabbath day. And we, I want to stop there for just a moment. See, even in Christ's death, he did not forget to take his moment of rest. Here's where we mess up as Christians. You ready? Here we go. We get so busy that we forget to stop and say, God, what's your will? See, at that moment in time, Christ had did everything that he was supposed to do. At that moment in time, he, he, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. He walked the earth. He lived the perfect life. He took, the, he took the, you know, the beatings, and he hung on the cross. And now he is here in this tomb on this Saturday afternoon and this Saturday morning, and he's resting there. And then after Sabbath, three days after his death, here comes Mary and Mary, and they're bringing spices. And they're like, we got to go anoint Jesus because that's what we do. But they forgot that this was not a normal burial and they said let's go let's go anoint Jesus and here's what she asked on the way there I wonder who's going to roll away the stone I wonder who's going to be the person that goes in and moves so that he can get out but watch this they forgot the teaching that Christ had said to them in Mark 9 it says this it says because he was teaching his disciples he said to them the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of man he said they will kill him and after three days he will what rise. See, they forgot the game plan. They had looked at everything that was going on around them. They had said, you know what? We saw how bad they beat him. We saw how bad they had mocked him. And we saw the crown of thorns. And we saw him on the cross. We saw all this. There's no way that he's coming away from this. See, what happened was is that they forgot the game plan. Here's the reality in our lives. For some of us, we forgot the calling that God placed on our life because we look at everything around us. We look and we say, Here's my life. I look and I say, I came from a home where I, my mom raised me because my parents were divorced. My father was uh, highly addicted to drugs and alcohol. I, I got out there and I started doing stupid stuff. I, I got out there and I started taking drugs and selling drugs and drinking alcohol. And then I became this person that got their life right with Christ. And then all of a sudden I started doing Christian hip hop and traveling and touring. And then I started selling down because my wife wouldn't stop having babies and I couldn't keep touring. So I'm stuck at home. Not stuck at home. I love being at home. I love my kids. I love my family. Erase that part. So now I'm at home being a happy father with five amazing kids. And God says, I want you to get in ministry. And I started doing this ministry that I love because I'm still working with teens and, and I'm still out there having fun. And then God says, I want you to go to Rockmart, Georgia. I want you to pastor a church out of Rockmart, Georgia. First of all, I barely knew where Rockmart, Georgia was. Second of all, I didn't even know that people actually lived in Rockmart, Georgia. But third of all, I did not know what I was going to do once I got to Rockmart, Georgia. And here's Christ, and he's like, trust me in all of it. See, I, I forgot my calling because I got to Rock Mart, and I start looking around. I'm like, this is not what I'm used to. I'm used to big stages and lights, and I'm used to, you know, having, having rooms full of young people, and they're shouting and, and screaming, and, 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 you know, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. See, that's what I'm used to. This is, this is not who I am, and I almost forgot my calling. Here's my question to you this morning. Did your circumstances cause you to forget your calling? See, have you looked at your life and you start to look at all the mistakes that you made, all the bad things that you've done, and you say, God can't use this. I'm broken. 
God can't use me. I'm this person. I'm that person. God can't use me because this is what the world says. God can't use me because of this and that. And the third, if you took about five seconds and you asked somebody in this room, what's your story? I promise you that they would have some dirt on their shoes because they've been through the mud just like you. But here's the thing is that the people in this room, the people that are part of this North family, we did not forget our calling. And when God said, come home, we ran. So watch this next part right here. This is the part that I love because... Mary Magdalene, they go there and they're like, hey, who's going to roll away the two? Who's going to roll away the stone? Who's going to do this? But Matthew 28, 1, and I love this part. It says they went to look at the tomb. Here's the other problem with us as Christians. We forget our calling, number one, but so many times we come to church to watch other people in their moment and we don't have our own. We say, I'm going to come to church and I'm going to watch. And then Quentin's up here and he's singing his heart out. He's got his hands up in the air. We're like, man, I wish I could do that. We see Tim Howard up here and he's doing his little thing. He's singing his song, got his little background singers that are amazing. Got the keyboard player and the drummer and they all rock. And we're like, man, I wish I had a voice and joy like that. But we see people that work in the cafe. We see Eric with his head full of beautiful hair. I'm going to mention that every time I preach now. <laughs> we see people and we hear their testimonies and we say, how did, how did they get delivered from drugs? And I see, I want a testimony like that so I can tell the world about it. And see, what happens is we come to church and we watch and we do not experience Christ. See, there's a difference. You can watch Christ. You can watch a moment with Christ. Man, you can come to church and you can be like, man, I'm going to sit there. And then all of a sudden you start looking at your watch and you're like, Ooh, this is getting a little, long, a little long, you know. Ooh, I'm trying to get home and eat my, my, my roast in the crock pot. I got to, I got to, you start looking at the pastor, you ain't doing this, but your eyes are like. And then you start saying amen a whole lot, hoping that the pastor will get the point. I don't listen to people when I preach, so I may be preaching for the next three hours, but this is what happens. We come to church and we look and we watch and we miss. See, Mary Magdalene, she said, I, I, let's go look at the tomb. And then they said, I wonder who's going to roll away the stone. I wonder how we're going to get into that tomb. And they forgot the plan. But watch what happens. Watch, you ready? In verse 2, it says, there was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. It says this in verse 4, the guards were so afraid of him that they took, that they shook and became like dead men. There, let's keep that scripture on the screen. Let me explain to you what it's saying. When it says they became like dead men, a lot of pastors, they preach that these guys fell over dead, and that's not what happened. They became so astonished at what had just happened that they were like, <gasps> and they passed out. You know how you see those things where they get bungee cord up into the air, and they pass out? Exact same thing. I don't ride those things. I'm not trying to end up YouTube famous because you hear a loud squeal, ah, and then you'll see me passing out. Not trying to be that guy. But that's what happens. But then watch the other part that happens in the scripture. It says the stone was rolled back, and then they were so shook that they, that they, that they were like dead men. It's like that time when your wife, gentlemen, if you're married, when your wife asks you that question that there's no right answer to. So instead of saying yes or no, you just stare. Like my wife be like, does this look good on me? You just, Do you think it looks good on you? Did you buy it because you thought it looked good on you? Or did you buy it because you thought I would think it looked good on you? And you just stare. Or like if your wife be like, did you really do that? And you're like, I don't know, did I do it? It was that type of moment. They didn't know what to do in that moment. But <clears throat> if you stop and you think about it, I want to I wanna give you a, a, a more narrow type of experience or something to to nibble on from the scripture you ready if you take notes this is where you need to take a note listen god will remove those things trying to keep you from his promise God said, I'm going to come, or Christ said, I'm going to rise again in three days. There's not a stone that's going to hold me back. There's not a guard that's going to hold me back. There's not a tree that's going to hold me back. There's not no nails that's going to hold me back. There's not a spear that's going to, nothing's going to hold me back because this is my promise and there's nothing that's going to keep me away from fulfilling my promise. Let's look at your life. Stop and think and think about who you are, where you've been, where you came from. Stop and think about where you are right now. And maybe you're sitting up here thinking, God can't use me because this is who I am. I'm a filthy, dirty, wretched sinner. I I'm this dirty person and God can't do anything with my life. If you knew where I was yesterday, you would be surprised that I was in church this morning. Not me. I, I was here doing Jesus stuff. 
talking about y'all sinners. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it, you look at your life, you're like, you're like, if you knew what I was doing just 12 hours ago, Vince, you would not think that I was this good person that God can use. I'll say it again. You ready? Listen to me. I want you to take it in, open up your heart and your ears. God will remove those things or anything trying to keep you from his promise in your life. It's not that God is not moving. It's that you're not accepting it. Let's just be honest for about half a second. Christ could walk through walls if he wanted to. Christ could have been like, because he did it later on with the disciples. He could have been like stone and just walk right through it. I'm going to be honest with y'all for about five seconds. When I was writing this message, I tried to walk through my bedroom wall just so I could see if I could do it. That's how delirious I was when I wrote this thing. So I was like, Quinn, come here. Let me use you again. You're about the size of a big boulder. Come on up here. <clears throat> so watch. Now watch. See, I can tell you I'm going to walk through Quentin. You got to face me. I may embrace you, but it's okay. Scoot over just a little bit. Open up your arms so it's not weird. But <laughs> I can say, Quentin, I say, guys, I'm about to walk through Quentin. See, watch. You, you're not embracing it. <laughs> you got to soak this moment in. Okay, let's try it again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, God, is that how you felt, Eric? I am so sorry <laughs> for doing that to you a couple weeks ago. But watch what Christ does. Now, let's imagine I can walk through you, okay? Let's just pretend, okay? So I'm walking through you. Yeah, good job. So Christ had to have that stone removed so that when they came, you ready? They knew. See, they put such a big stone. Come here, big stone. They put such a... Big stone in the way that nobody could move it. They didn't want anybody getting in there. But Christ was like, listen, I don't think y'all understand. I made a promise to them. I told them in three days, three days I'm coming out of this thing. So regardless of what it takes, I've got to do what I've got to do. He says, excuse me, stone, I got I to gotta go see my people. There's another scripture in the Bible where what happens is they come and an angel's there to greet them. And he says, go see the place where he lays. Go see the place where his cloth lays. Watch this scripture right here, verse 5. It says, the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. It says, he is not here. He is what? Risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell the disciples he was risen from the dead and, and is going ahead of you into Galilee. And then it says this. You ready? There you will see him. Now I have told you. Take notes. This is a good time to take a note. You ready? When Christ moved, dead things remain. But the promise is alive and well. Watch this. Hold your arms out, Quentin. You ready? So what happens is, 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 is Christ says, I'm going to arise in three days. And you like, man, Jesus, are you serious? Hold that arm out for me. Put it, put it, you got it. There you go. Are you serious? And you're like, yeah, I'm for real. And the angel comes and says, let's go see the place where he lays. And you, you go there and watch what happens. Is that addiction that you have. That addiction, whether it be to, 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 to sexual immorality or to drugs or alcohol. See, you go there and see, there, there's, that, there's that, that, that thing that's laying there. Or, or maybe, maybe yours was a loss. Maybe you lost a child or maybe you lost somebody and it is just eating you up inside. See, you go there and, and there it is and it's, it's there, it's still there. And see, maybe, maybe here, here's another one. Maybe you're dealing with grief. Maybe you got some things going on inside and you're hurting and you go see and then boom, that's still, that's laying there. And then, or, or, or maybe you're dealing with depression. See, I've been there before. I was one of those guys that was, pray through it. You're going to be all right. See, maybe, maybe that's what you're, maybe that's what you're dealing with. And you go and, and see, listen, listen, see, maybe you're dealing with anxiety. 
COVID, man, it showed me that I had anxiety. COVID and anxiety was the greatest weight loss plan I ever had in my entire life. Maybe that's what you're dealing with. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're dealing with some poverty issues. Maybe, maybe you say, I don't know how I'm going to feed my family next week. Watch this here. Here, here's something, here's something here. Maybe you're dealing with hopelessness. See, I'm preaching about hope, and you're sitting up here saying, I don't know what you're talking about. There's, no there's no such thing as hopeless. See, watch. Maybe, maybe for you it's not hopelessness. Maybe you, you went through a divorce, and you're still trying to make your way through it. You're trying to navigate your, your way through the craziness and the chaos. Maybe you got kids, and maybe y'all all trying to figure out how you're going to make it. Past this point, or maybe, maybe yours is not depression. Maybe it's not anxiety or grief. Maybe you're just dealing with sadness. Maybe you lost a loved one. Maybe you don't feel good enough. See, maybe that's, that's who you are. See, the angel had to prove to him that Christ's promise was coming true. See, the angel said, come here, let me show you some things. And maybe God is saying to you, listen, those things that, that, that were holding you back from my promise, they're dead and gone. I'm alive and I'm well. I'm your hope. I'm your peace. I'm your joy. I'm going to help bring you through this thing that you're going through. See, those dead things, you got to learn how to leave behind and hold on to me. When I was going through depression, one of the hardest things for me to do was to trust God in that moment. You put your arm down, just keep those on there for me. I remember I was, I was just, I reached this point, and life was going great. Church was going great. Everything was going good. But I had reached a point in my life where I just did not know where hope was going to come from for my tomorrow. And I reached the day where I was sitting in my car, and I became so scared. I called my wife, and I said, I don't know what's going on, but I am in. I, I can't shake what I'm going through. And I had something known as stress-induced depression. And what had happened was, is instead of me saying, Christ, you take it all, what I did was I was like, I, I got this. I got it. I got this. I, I got it. It's mine. I'm going I'm to hold on to it. Because what happens is, is when we don't see or feel Christ, maybe the air conditioner didn't blow the way you thought it should, or maybe the song didn't hit the way you thought it should, or maybe I did not preach the way you thought I should, or maybe you thought I should have wore a button down instead of a yellow shirt. And instead of you saying, you know what, I'm going to grab hold of Christ, you started grabbing hold of things in your life, and you said, this is where I'm going to find my hope. This is where I'm going to find my peace. This is where I'm going to find my joy. This is where I'm going to find my identity. And you've been walking through life holding on to dead things, and you're missing the promise that Christ has in your life because Christ says, hold my hand or take my hand, hold your hand out, Quinn, and you can't take his hand because you won't let go of the dead things in your life the things that he has already died for. But watch what happens. What, watch what happens when Christ gets a hold of your life and you're able to give those things to him and you're able to hold his hand. Somebody get a picture really quick. <laughs> and you say, God, I put those things down because I knew I could not make it without you. See, Easter Sunday, the reason why we celebrate is not because it's the Super Bowl of the, of the church year. We celebrate because we're able to preach with authority because people come to church and they listen that Christ can take the dead things in your life and offer you life. That's why we love it. Watch this next scripture right here. Watch this. So they leave, and the Bible says, So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, uh, afraid yet filled with joy. And it says, And they ran to the, his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them, and he said, Greetings. And they came to him, clasped his feet, and worshiped him. Here's another note. Listen, some of y'all have forgotten how to worship because you forgot what the voice of Christ sounded like. 
See, for some of us, we've been so caught up in media, we've been so caught up in what's going on, we've been so caught up in our junk that when Christ says, I'm here, you don't even know what his voice sounds like because you haven't heard it in so long. And you're like, what am I supposed to do? You're telling me on one end to give it all to Christ, but now you're telling me that I don't know what his voice even sounds like. So inside you're like, I know you're saying that God is alive and well, but in my life he's dead. But watch what this scripture says in 1 Corinthians. And I love this scripture because we read the other part the other day. But what it says in 1 Corinthians right here, it says, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave. Where's your victory? See, once you come to the place in your life where you realize that death has no control over your life because Christ is already giving you victory, it switches some things up in your life. See, those dead things, they no longer hold any value. You go, see, oh, thanks, man. Those dead things in your life, they no longer hold any value. They no longer have any worth in your life because you've come to this place where you realize that death does not bring you anything but destruction. John 11, it puts it this way. It says, Jesus said to her, I'm the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe in Romans 8, 34? He says it this way. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died more than that who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding on us, for us. What does this mean? Let me give you an example. Today we decided to do a baptism. And see, we can look at a baptism as one in two things. See, this could be a bunch of water that people hop in and I dunk them under and I say a couple words. Here, I was going to put these around there for me. Or this could be a moment where the Easter message truly comes to life. Where we can truly see people die in Christ and find life in his resurrection. I'm not asking anybody to jump in the water. What I'm asking you to do this morning is this, and my last slide says it best that we come to a place where we realize that hope is still risen. Christ is not dead. He's sitting on a throne this morning, and right now he is fighting for you. Right now he's fighting for your family. Right now he's fighting with you. Oh, man, my house is broken. He's fighting with you. My kids are, are wild. He's fighting with you. You don't understand. I'm, I got some things going on internally, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. He's fighting with you. But you got to realize that he's not on a cross. He's not in a tomb. He's sitting on a throne and he's fighting for you. This morning, every person that gets in this water has made a decision that they're going to leave those dead things behind. Because they say, man, hope is still risen. Come on up here, Tim. Because they say hope is still risen. Christ is still alive. Easter is not just another day where we come together. But they came to a place in their life where they said, God, my life and all of its brokenness is yours. My past is yours. My addictions are yours. My anxiety is yours. My depression is yours. My grief is yours. My sadness is yours. My poverty is yours. My sin is yours. My broken marriage is yours. My broken children are yours. My broken brain is yours. My broken heart is yours. God, everything about me is yours. And, and the reason why is because I know I can't do it on my own. And listen, maybe you've ran to that tomb a million times to see those stripes or those things of your past because you need to be reminded that Christ is alive. What's one million and one? Maybe this time he'll grab hold and you won't let go. This morning, I want everybody to do something for me, and this is as traditional as we get. If you could, close your eyes and bow your head. Nobody looking around, please. This morning, I spoke about hope. And what I said was this. Hope is still risen. And I meant it. I meant it. Maybe this morning you're here and you don't feel like it is. Maybe this morning you're here and you're like, man, 
I hear what this dude is saying, but I don't know how much I believe it. Maybe every time you turn around, you feel like the devil is kicking you in the gut. And then you're like, man, I hear what you're saying, but where's Jesus at now? You say he's still alive, but I feel like, it, it, like he's killing me right now. Hope is still alive. It's still risen. It's still on the throne. Maybe you say, man, you don't understand, Vince. I've gotten so far away from the cross that I don't know my way home. Here's your moment. Here's your opportunity to get some things right with Christ. Maybe it's your first time. Maybe it's your hundredth time. But here is your moment to get it right. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around, I want to ask you a question this morning. Maybe you're here and you say, Vince, thanks for helping me remember that those dead things, Christ, he defeated them. And maybe you're here and you're saying, you know what? I need to get some things right this morning. What a better day to find life than on the day that we celebrate the day that Christ came back to life. So with nobody looking around, if that's you this morning, if you say, Vince, man, I don't want to leave this building. I don't want to go another second. I don't want to go another minute. I don't want to go another hour, another day without getting this thing right with Jesus. I hear his voice this morning, and I'm ready to run into his arms. If that's you this morning, do me a favor. Nobody's looking around. Lift your hand up as high as you possibly can. Nobody looking around. I see you. 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 This morning... We're going to do something before we do this baptism. We're going to say a prayer. Listen, this prayer is not some ticket into heaven because the Bible says it this way. It says we're all sinners. All of us. Even me. But it says that if I confess with my mouth... And I believe in my heart that Christ came, lived the perfect life, died a sinner's death, and rose again. That I'll have eternal life. What are you talking about? John 3, 16, it puts it this way. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life or eternal life. So what are you saying, Vince? I'm saying that Christ loves you just the way you are. He wants to heal you. He wants to fix you. He wants to give you victory this morning. But here's the other part. Paul reminds us, he says it this way. He says, for I'm crucified with Christ. Therefore, I no longer live, but Christ now lives in me. So we say the prayer and we believe it. Because if you don't mean it in your heart, then you're just saying a bunch of words. But here comes the next part. You ready? When you leave this building, you live a life that screams hope is alive. Christ is still risen and I'm running after his will. So this morning, we're going to shout a prayer at the top of our lungs. Because it's a victory chant for so many people that have raised their hands in this building this morning. And when we say amen, we're going to shout a shout of victory. Tim Howard is going to sing this song, and we're going to shout this song at the top of our lungs. Because as that first song said, hell lost another one. Hope is alive, and so many have found it today. Repeat after me. Say, Father God, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I believe you sent your son to live a perfect life, die a sinner's death, and raise in victory three days later. I'm so glad that hope is alive and that it's sitting on a throne and it's fighting for me. Father God, forgive me for my sins. Use me for your will 
for your glory so that the world may see you. Thank you for being my hope. I'm leaving the dead things where they are. I'm running after your will. In your precious and holy name, amen. Let's make some noise for those people that gave their life to Christ this morning, that got it right with Christ this morning. God is our hope this morning, amen? Look at somebody say, hope is not dead. It is alive. Look at somebody else say, hope is not dead. It is alive. Look at one more person say, hope is not dead. It is alive. Let's stand and let's worship this morning.
more time and we sing the I love doing this, baptisms. I love it. But we got to move this heater because somebody's going to get burnt. <laughs> I love doing baptisms. And what better day to do one other than Easter? Here's a moment where people get to come and say, hey, I'm all in. I'm all in. Baptism is a public expression of faith to you guys and to me, and to Tim and the family here. That guy's alive and well, and our life belongs to him. Anytime I do baptism, I always tell them, I say, the sermon that you're going to preach in this water is better than anything I can say from this stage. Because I can tell you that God is real, and I can tell you that God is good. But here is the thing. When you see it, it does something to you. We got people that are young, young. We got people that are not so young. You ain't going to call them old. We got people of all ages getting baptized today. What an amazing, amazing moment. You guys can be seated. Go ahead and sit down. So what's going to happen is I'm going to call them up and I'm going to ask them a couple questions. And as I ask them these questions, they're going to say yes. And I told them, I said, if any time you want to say no, it's okay. But you're going to have to get out the water. No, I'm just kidding. I ain't say it like that. And what's going to happen this morning is, pass that to you, is as we take them under and as we bring them back up, we're going to cheer for them because they've gone from death to life and God is doing something amazing this morning. Let's go, Miss Lily. You ready? All right. Oh, I threw my back out yesterday, so you're going to have to hop in there yourself. I know it's like jumping in the deep end, but make it work. All right, here we go. This is Miss Lily. You, you don't sit down because you're really short, and that water might might swallow you whole. 
How, how long ago, we had this conversation, I'm trying to remember, how long ago was it when you gave your life to Jesus? Two years. I remember you said that. That was a test. If you, you miss another, we ain't going to baptize you, all right? No. I'm just kidding. So Lily, her mom said, Lily wants to be baptized. And this is what really sold me on Lily here is the other day we were working here at the church, and she called me, and I didn't know who it was. I was like, this is a scammer. She was like, hey. And I was like, who's this little kid on my phone? And she said, I'm supposed to call you about being baptized. I said, I'm, I'm a little busy. I'll call you right back. I promise. I would have stopped, but I had tools in my hand. Okay, that's a lie. I was watching other dudes with tools in their hands. Let's be honest. And, and, I, and I said, I'll call you back in just a few minutes. It's probably about two hours later. I got a text message that said, hey, like you forgot about me, bro. So I called her back and we talked. And she, I said, you want to get baptized? I said, yeah, I want to get baptized. So Lily, I'm going to ask you three questions here. And you're simply going to ask, answer them honestly. Do you understand what we're doing here today? This is a public expression of your faith to all these people, your family and friends and extended family. Yes. Oh, you got to say it a little bit louder. <laughs> yes. There we go. Lily, have you given your life to Jesus Christ, understanding that you were a sinner and you needed Jesus Christ to come and save you and make you whole again? Have you done that? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> last, but not le- not, last but not least, Lily, it's a lot of L's. Do you promise to allow God to lead God and direct your life for the rest of your life? And will you follow after his will, chase after his purpose, and fulfill it? Yes. That's a whole lot. We're going to hold you to it. Pop squatting his water here. On my knees. I mean, if that, if you, I would do my butt here because, you know, I'm sorry, your rear end. I forgot we're in church. <laughs> all right, so you're going to, you, Pop, sit down all the way down there. There you go. All right, grab hold of my arm here. Lily, slide forward just a little bit so you don't bust your head. Oh, you're short. Never mind. You're good. (laughs) Lily, it is my honor and my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's hear it for her. You all right? (laughs) Yep, yep, hop on out. No, you got to stay here the whole time. By the time it's over, we have four people in this thing. Come on out. Don't slip, don't fall. Mr. Eric is over there. He's going to help you now. When you're the pastor, you forget your towel. Come on up here, Brimley. Hop on up in this water here. No, it's not cold at all. I had the honor of actually officiating her and Cole's wedding yesterday. Give it up for Mrs. Brimley, right? Is he treating you right? Day one in? Give him a couple years. He'll start to get on your nerves, I promise. It happens. We all do it. Brindley, how long ago was it when you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior? Two, three. Two, three years ago. Sweet. I, I, Brindley has always been quiet, and I'm finally starting to see her personality come out. I've been seeing it. I'm finally getting this chance to see it. It's pretty cool. Brindley, do you understand what you're doing this morning is a public expression of faith to all these people, your friends, your family? Um, and before God? Awesome. Brindley, do you, have you accepted Christ as your personal Savior? In other words, have you came to the point in your life where you said, I'm a sinner and I need Jesus to come and fix all those broken places and bring life to all those dead places? Awesome. Brindley, do you promise to allow God to lead God and direct your life for the rest of your life from this day forward to chase after his, pray for his will, chase after his purpose and fulfill what he calls you to do? Awesome. Pop on, scoop forward here. All right. I need some tall people. Y'all killing me. Here we go. Grab hold of my arm there, ma'am. Brindley, it is my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. There you go, Brindley. Come on over there. All right. Jessica, you ready? Come on up here, Miss Jessica. After Brindley gets her shoes on, be careful. High point in here. <laughs> Jessica Cook, they actually started coming to our, when did you guys start coming to our church? February, and they have 
just jumped in head first in the deep end. She said, is there anything I can do? So there's not just something you can do. There's a lot that you can do. Um, and they have important to this church. I've been able to get to know her and her awesome husband, Wayne. And they said, we're thinking about being baptized. And I said, we're doing an Easter Sunday. And they said, we're going to talk about it. And they made the decision. And getting to know them <clears throat> over this period of time has been amazing. You guys have brought such a great joy to this church. We're so happy that you guys are here with us. Um, you and your sons, one day Ethan's going to talk to me. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And one day he's going to like Krispy Kreme better than Dunkin'. But until that day, we're praying for him. But Jessica, when did you accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Third grade. Third grade? I was about to say, how long ago was that? And I was like, don't do that. That's, that is amazing. That's pretty awesome. Jessica, do you understand that today what you're doing is a public expression of faith? And it is something that you're doing before all these people, your North family, your extended family, your friends, but most of all, before God? Yeah. Awesome. Jessica, have you accepted Christ as your personal Savior? In other words, did you, did you understand that you were a sinner in need of a Savior? And you said, Jesus, I believe you came, you lived a perfect life, you died a sinner's death, and I need for you to forgive me of all my sins. Yeah. Awesome. Jessica, as you already have, and, and I've seen it evident in so many ways here at this church, do you promise to chase after the will of God, pray for the will of God, chase after his purpose, and fulfill what he's called you to do? Yeah. Awesome. Well, Miss Jessica, with all that being said, you, you don't have to <laughs> scoot forward for me. You're tall. You have to sit on your, your bottom. There we go. Grab hold of my arm there, Miss Jessica. It is my honor and privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ready, Mr. Wayne? Wayne is Jessica's husband. What better way to celebrate Easter than to get baptized on the same day, hey? Eh? Man, that is amazing. Come on up in here, Mr. Wayne. Wayne is learning really quick. If I call you and say, hey, what you up to? Don't just say you're busy. <laughs> Other day I said, Wayne, are you busy? Because he forgot he told me he had to work. So I was like, Wayne, you busy? He couldn't lie because you already told me in the house of the Lord that you had to work. Say, I got a bounce house. It's about 6,000 pounds. I need some help lifting it. It's the worst decision of my life. Them little kids better be glad I love Jesus, right, Wayne? <laughs> exactly. Wayne, you guys started our church in February, and I feel like you guys have literally just went running with us, man. It has been amazing. It's been really cool getting to know you guys and grow with you guys and just get to know your family. Um, Wayne, I, he actually, I guess you have been watching the services on Facebook. And he said, they just popped in one day. And I was like, hey, I'm Vince. He says, yeah, I know. I've been watching. I was like, that's weird, bro. <laughs> got to find a better way to explain that. And uh, we talked a little bit. And then I actually got into our info email. If you ever want to reach us, don't, don't email the info at North. We don't check it. We just, it's just there. Um, but I saw where he said, hey, I'm interested in your church. And I felt horrible. But I'm glad you gave us a chance and you came. And uh, Wayne has been north. Wayne and Jessica both have been all north since they stepped foot in this building, like so many other people here at this church. And it blesses my heart. Mr. Wayne, when did you give your life to Christ? I was around 12, 13. Wow, 12 or 13. How many years ago was that? You're a dude. I can ask you. I'm just saying. <laughs> but uh, a long time. That was a long time. Wayne, it is an honor and privilege to be able to do this today. I feel like we've grown. I mean, Quentin, I know Quentin loves you. I love you. I love your wife, too. Um, do you understand that today what you're doing is you are doing a public expression of faith in front of all your friends, family, your North family, but most of all, God? Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> Wayne, my second question to you is, have you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior? In other words, have you reached a point in your life where you said, I'm a sinner, I need a Savior? And you say, Christ, I believe you came, you lived a perfect life, you died a sinner's death, and I need for you to come into my life and forgive me for all my sins. Yeah. Awesome. Wayne, do you promise to allow God to lead God and direct your life from this day forward? Do you promise to pray for his will in your life, to chase after his purpose in your life and, for, and be obedient to what he's called you to do? Yeah. Even if it means helping me move a bounce house? Yeah, I think, oh, okay. Well, I got to think about letting you up. Anyway, so slide forward for Mr. Wayne. 
<laughs> Wayne, you've answered all these questions, and you said yes, and I truly believe that you believe that Christ came, he died, he rose, and that he's in your life, and that you truly want to chase after his will. With all that being said, Wayne, it is my honor and my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let me hear oh. Thank you for sharing your towel, brother. <laughs> Today we've had some amazing people do an amazing thing. They came up, they said, Christ, you take me from where I was to where you've called me to be, man. And he will do it every single time. Before you leave this building this morning, here's my hope and my prayer is that you find Jesus. Man, this whole time that we spent together is for naught if you do not leave here with a relationship with Christ. So listen, even after we say our final amen, you can still talk to us. We're here. We want to show you who Jesus is. We want you to experience the same hope and victory that so many have and so many are in this building and all around the world today. North Church, extended family, hope is alive and well. Hope is not dead, it is not fading, it is not running. It is still risen. And his name is what? Come on, his name is what? Jesus. Now let's say it like we know it. His name is what? Jesus. Hey Amen. Let's pray as Quint makes his way up. Father God, I thank you and I praise you for being our hope. God, I pray that as we close out this service, God, that we don't just celebrate the hope that we have in you on a day, but that we celebrate it every single day of our life, Father. God, you are our hope. And God, you love us more than life itself. And for that, we don't just celebrate you one day. God, we celebrate you every day. And if you agree with that this morning, all God's children said, amen. Amen. Y'all enjoy today's service? Come on, y'all enjoy today's service? That was an amazing message. That was amazing worship. Thank you guys for being with us. Um, to all the visitors, I hope you enjoyed yourself. If you're interested in coming to North, if you want to know more about the church, I'll be right out here at the Welcome Center. We'd love to give you a T-shirt, coffee cup, whatever it is. We'll, uh, we just give stuff away. So we'd love to talk to you a little bit, get to know you. Uh, we hope you guys join us again next week. Facebook, uh, we'll start back up Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, this Wednesday night, Kim is going to be speaking. Uh, leading it so you guys get on there and support her I can't wait to hear what she's got in store to lead us through and then of course next Sunday uh, 11 a.m. we'll be right back here worshiping God still celebrating that he is our risen Savior amen no youth tonight before I forget no youth tonight y'all spend time with your family yeah be careful walking out these floors get slippery when they're wet so you guys please take your time as you exit uh, make sure you don't slip and fall there's water in quite a few different places from looking at it from up here but uh the last part of our service is where we worship christ and our giving uh if you guys came to the easter egg hunt yesterday you saw how much time how much energy and how much money got poured into that thing it was an amazing time we had i want to say close to 300 people come through here we got to love on them we got to give them stuff it was uh, we had about four different easter egg hunts so <laughs> it was an amazing time though we had a blast but that's where your guys' tithes and offering is. Nobody gets paid. Nobody in this entire building gets paid. It's just all through love, the love of Christ, and wanting to love on this community. So I encourage you guys to keep giving. But I'm going to close this out in a word of prayer. You can give on GiveLify. Uh, you can give on NorthChurchRockmart.com, or you can give cash or check up here. But as you give, you are dismissed. We've enjoyed having you guys, and I hope you have a happy Easter. Our dear Heavenly Father, as we come for today, God, we just ask God that what you said to us this morning we go out and we spread it across this nation God that we serve a risen king God I can't wait to experience what you have in store for us in Rock Mart what you have in store for us in North I can't wait to see how you shake the city God we love you and we praise you in Jesus name I pray amen